let me explain um, how I exported this, um, how I got this GPS file. If you have your GPS, you just plug it to the USB. Under the USB, you go to my computer. You see German GPS map. German GPS map. So, this one is just the source, like the raw file, how you can get it. Once you open the Jermaine GPA, you see another folder, Jermaine. It's better you can just write it down so you know the step. You see Jermaine and you open Jermaine. You go to GPX file. Now I'm going to explain this folder one by one for you. I will explain the folder one by one for you. You go to Jermaine. Oh. Under you see Jermaine file. You go to Jermaine file and you see all these files. You see bed, bed, bed eye, custom maps, custom symbols, X, X data filter. This is the GPX file that we are going to be concentrating on. So now, can you see the, it's clear to you, right? All right. You guys can see it very well. Now, you see that custom map? It's if you want to add a, maybe a raster file to your GPS as an overlay reference um, image. If it, an image is referenced, for example, our base map now is referenced. I want to add it to the GPS. You want to be seeing a picture of what you are, where you are going to, where you are going, an image of what you have, a base map. You can just open that custom map. That one is for it, custom map. Or your sister, you can add it, but we'll go to that one later. I will, yes, I will explain to you that one later how you can add a base map. You get the base map. Now it has a long, it has a long process compared to. So now this, um, this custom symbols is if you want to give your GPS. You see all those points that you are picking. You know on Google, I mean on GIS, it has all these symbols too, different symbols. You can create your own symbol too and add it to it. You can have your own symbol. Maybe you want a symbol of house on your map. You know, when we were taking this point, you saw something like flag there. So if you want to add your own kind of picture or symbol to it, that one is for that um, folder there. This export X GPS. So you see this GPX file is where we save, where the GPS saves all the points that we are picking, all the tracks and all the points. That's where it saves all the files. And this JPEG, you can just add normal, maybe your personal picture, those ones you have. This SQL, I, so for the GPX file, once you open it, you will see active current navigation, and you see the rest, waypoint track. You see waypoint and track. Now that active, the first one that you are seeing, active, it is if, I'll, for example, now, if you own your GPS, you know, if you own your GPS, you will see something like a line following you as you are moving. You see a line following you as you are moving. That line is automatically saved real time. It's saving like that, like that. As you off your GPS, it will still be saved. So it will save on active. Active. So, for example, now, if you own your GPS again, and you want to start another... Um, journey with your GPS. That one that is saved on active, you come here. And if you start another file that is saved on active, you understand? So now, for example, you see track waypoint, 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 waypoint. Now you notice that there are the only two files on that place. There are track and waypoint. But both of them, they are GPX file. Now this waypoint is just like a point data. That's the point that are for GIS. It's the point we pick, all those coordinates we are picking on the field. So in a day, if you pick like 100 points, it will save it as just one uh, GPX file. It will give the name, the date you saved it. So it's not like you save one file now, you save it and it will be saving, saving, saving. You just save everything, accumulate everything as a one file, GPX file. So you see all these ones that are here, they are subsequent files that they have, that have saved before in previous days. So if you work today with a GPX file and you save maybe 20 points today, and tomorrow you save another 20 points, it is 
save them as two waypoints. You understand? So now for that track, it is only if that track is just is just. Let me explain it again. It's only where you are moving with the GPS. It's a file that follows you, a route, just a line that follows you any path you follow when your GPS is on. If you're on your GPS and your and your map is um, accurate, once you are moving with the GPS, there's a line that will be following you you're on the GPS. You'll be seeing it on the GPS. On the GPS, um, you, you, it will show it will follow you anywhere you are going. That's why it is called track. It's just tracking you. So that file is saving automatically in real time. Anywhere you are going, it is saving, it is saving. Like that. That is the track that you are saying. So all of them, they are GPX files. So for example now, if we should export this track, I mean import this track on um, QGIS, it will show you the path where that group walks. You know, for example, we walk through this place to the gates like that, like that. It will just show you all the places you walk through. So that's how I got the GPX file for the for this um, project. Okay, you can just you can just highlight it and copy it. You get just highlight it and copy it. Once you copy it, put it in a folder. This file that you see that I copied is what I sent to everyone. That uh, file that you see training GPS uh, file. These are the files I copied. This um, one of them. I just copied one of them. So that train GPS file. You can just copy it and overlay it on the um, expert GPS or QGI. You understand now? Okay. Let's um, let's open our QGI. Let's open our QGI. You keep put it in a folder. Just save it in a folder that you can remember. Once you copy the GPX file, you put it in a folder. If you are not clear, you can just draw me back. You can ask me any question. So let's launch our QGIS. On the QGIS, you see layers. Layer. On that layer, you see create layer and add layer. You see create layer, add layer. On that layer, you see create layer and add layer. Now that create layer is just if you want to create a new shape file or any raster file or any data. And you see that add layer is if you have existing file. So now since our GPX file is a vector file, it's not a raster file, we're going to use add vector layer. Add vector layer. So once you click on it, add vector layer. Add vector layer. Okay. You click on layer. Sorry, layer. You see add layer. Under add layer, you see add vector layer. Under layer, you see add vector layer. Add vector layer. So you click on it. So for example, now you see all this add vector layer. You can add raster, those that are just uh, new to QGIS. If you want to work with a raster file or vector file, it is from that layer you start adding your data, just like GIS, that add data. So once you click on add vector layer, click on browse. Click on browse. Now go to where you save that um, training file. Where you save it. Locate where you save that training file. The GPX file. Locate where you save it. If it is not showing, don't worry. Just locate the folder where you save it. The training file. If you've located it, you see this icon here. Click on it. This icon. Click on it and locate GPX exchange format. One. No, click on the two. I like the two. The both of them. Yeah, I like both of them. I like both of them. Once you highlight it, just click on open. open. Yeah. I like both of them. I click on open. So if you... Is everybody here? All right. If you click on open, click on open again. 
Click on open again. Now you have um, different options like this. Now since we are working with a point five, you click on the first one. That's waypoint. Sorry, this one, waypoint. You click on a waypoint. Since we are working with a point five, click on this waypoint. If you are not, if you are not following, you just call Tessini. Tessini will put you through. Click on a waypoint and you click, press OK. You not see waypoint. Click. I like it too. What is that? Yeah. Is this? You will see two. Click on the waypoint again, and click OK. Now you should see all your files like this. You can see all your files there. Testing. All right, now to just convert to shape file, you right click on the. I like both of them. I like the both waypoint, and you go to save us. Go to save us. Just click on the waypoint. Leave that one that you have already saved. Click on the waypoints. Go to save us. If you go to save us, you will see um, this format. You click on the format. You see S3 shape file. Click on S3 shape file. Click on S3 shape file. Yeah, just mm -hmm. click on that one. Right, click on that and go to save us. Just one, just one. Save us, yeah. So if you go to save us, you see format. Click on the format, shape file. So you click on the format shape file and you browse the name where you want to save your file. You give it another name. You can give it a name shape file. Once you give it a name shape file, press save. And you notice that the format is already highlighted for the for the coordinate system. Just in case you want to change it, we'll be working with that default setting, the WGS84. We'll be working with the default setting. UTF-8, yeah. Once you are done, just click OK. Once you are done, just click OK.